In 2018, I had quite a lot of stress and I was looking for an outlet. So I started boxing. The fact that you can just skip, for example, you don't have to think about anything apart from your breathing and the, the sound of the rope hitting the floor. It's, that's, it sounds really weird, but it's almost like hypnosis where you just completely zone out and afterwards you think, right, you know what, I've had some time to reflect on whatever it is I'm thinking about, even if you don't realize what it is that you're thinking about. Hi, I'm Bobby. Uh, I've had testicular cancer twice, once when I was 32 and again at the end of 2019. I was uh, cycling to work, had a double puncture, bruised both my testicles on my crossbar. It really hurt. Went to see the doctor. So it came back that it was non-seminoma. It wasn't aggressive, but the tumor was five and a half centimeters. I had some people who used to call me Bobby Big Balls. Uh, so that was felt like it was very apt. The word cancer is scary. People ask, how are you? And I would always deflect it with humor and never really addressing the fact that I hadn't really dealt with it very well. I remember when I called and told my parents, I didn't want to go up and see them in person. I, I told them over the phone. It must have been really difficult for my family. But at the time, I was just like, I don't want to deal with this. When I did my second November in 2014, I put on my blurb that I'd had testicular cancer and I was contacted by somebody in November. Ben contacted me and said, hey, listen, a group of us get together that have had testicular cancer. We just sit there and have a chat and talk about where we have struggled and where we can help each other. And even though everybody's experience is slightly different, by and large, you kind of, I think it was that comfort in knowing that not only have these people been through it, but they've survived. And sometimes it's a little bit easier to share with somebody who either has no testicles, like I don't, <laughs> or someone who has been through the same thing. As I came up to the five year kind of all clear, I wasn't relieved. It was, who's gonna look after me now? Who's gonna check up on me? Who's gonna give me blood tests? What happens if it comes back? And then later that year, it was coming up to November and I was on holiday. I thought I should check myself because it's November. This is what I tell everyone to do, I should check myself. And I did, and I found another lump. And it was only three days into the holiday. It was a two week holiday and I was like, oh. And my first thought was, what am I gonna tell? Should I tell my fiance? But I was very lucky in that having learned from the first time that I shouldn't bottle any of this up. I didn't hide it and I was completely honest about it. And then when I was diagnosed, I think if I'm honest, there was relief. I was okay messaging you know, my family. I even sent pictures of myself in the gown saying, doesn't this look awful? And it wasn't anywhere near as painful or stressful as the first time. I managed to catch it very, very early. Had I not known what to look for, it could have been potentially far more impactful. I never thought it could happen to me. I was 32. I'm not a high risk category. I haven't got any history of cancer in my family. It just won't happen to me, and it did. Sometimes I think when you hear these things and having that awareness that someone else has come through it, and it's okay, and that, it, you know, life carries on, is a big deal. It certainly did help me. And I would like to think that by sharing these experiences, it will help others.